I was reacting to the guy eating all the mayonnaise. Remember that guy? Oh, the, the, uh, the Duke's Mayo Bowl. Yes. Yeah, I still, I'm telling you, man, that was the most effective marketing event of my lifetime. Wow. Because I still want to try some Duke's Mayo. Wow. Because I watch all those early bowl games. Uh, and we had a lot of fun this week, and we're going to have a little bit more fun in the short time we have left when we visit with Jack and Jacob Wilson, who are standing by. Are they? It looks like they're in the same house, and we put that stripe up there just to make it look like they're <laughs> worlds apart. Uh, we're going to visit with Jack and Jacob coming up next on Hot Stove. You're watching today on NBC. Yeah, good morning. Good to see you guys. Jacob, let's start yeah, with you, man. Uh, let's start with you, and let's start with growing up with your dad playing uh, uh, as an infielder in the big leagues. You play the infield. You grew up in a major league clubhouse, we understand, and uh, this is all kind of second nature for you, I guess. Yeah, for sure. You know, growing up with a big league dad is super, I guess, beneficial for a baseball player, kind of finding his love for the game of baseball. So growing up, uh, being able to watch him play and going to all the clubhouses that he was a part of was super cool. So, Jacob, I'm going to stay with you, and then I'll let your dad follow up on my question to you. Who was your favorite player all those years hanging out? <laughs> yeah, it's got, it's got to be him. Me and dad, you know, being able to watch him play, out, that was the cool part. Oh, Jack, man. is he dead on with that? I, I saw was, you laugh. I thought he was going to say Aramis Ramirez. Yeah, you know, we had some really good people. We had Freddie Sanchez and Jason Bay that were really uh, cool to Jacob as a young player um, and, and really took time with him, especially Freddie. Um, we had close ties. So we had some really good, really good people in Pittsburgh those years that he was growing up in. So, Jack, I want to I stay on this real quick because you were known for having some of the best hands that ever played in big leagues. And did you pass that on to Jacob? And if so, what did you teach him and how did you develop that? Uh, yeah, he kind of obviously being kind of a, a forefront of my game. I I tried to pass that down and how important defense was in a game that that has a lot of offense to it and, and the importance of it. So made that a, you know instilled that in him at a young age, uh, but then also really challenged him to to be a great hitter, to to learn and watch the best hitters in the game and, and take cues from them. So I think it was more like uh, I really want. You you to take this part of my game, but then let's let's look at the greatest hitters that I that I played against and and try to to add that to to his game. Something that I never got to reach that that height on the offensive side. So, but he was he was a great great student. I know it's tough sometimes to listen to dad. Um, he was he's been awesome his whole life to be able to take information and and, and apply it. So it's been a lot of fun watching him grow. Hey, here's a question for both of you, Jack. I'll start with you and Jacob. I want your thoughts as well. Grand Canyon University is uh, kind of one of those under-the-radar baseball schools that baseball people are familiar with. They've had a lot of success there with that program. They've turned a lot of players into big leaguers. They win. What is it, Jack, from your perspective as a coach there that makes GCU a as big of a power as it is in baseball? I just think it's 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 a family. It's a close knit group, uh, and they all have a common goal of getting to the next level and working hard and getting better every single day. Um, they play for each other, and I think that carries on to the next level uh, to become winners in, in in pro ball. Is to to learn how to be a great teammate, to learn the little things that need to be done every single day to win baseball games, and they've done that here for such a long time. And we've seen those players move on and be successful later on after after being at Grand Canyon. So. Uh, Attention to detail, repeating the repeatables. I mean, that's that's really what they that they've installed here before I got here, and what we're trying to continue that that legacy that has been laid out over the last 10, 12 years. Jacob, what is it for you about Grand Canyon that that makes it such a special place, a winning place? Yeah. So going off what he said, it's pretty much a giant family. You know, all these guys they come to the field, they love being with each other, and um, it's just everybody comes here, and it's no matter who we play, like we're always. We're always ready to go play. It doesn't matter who the team is. I know we're, we've been seen as a mid-major for so long, but it doesn't really matter what type, kind of type of team we're playing. We're really just going out there playing baseball. You know, it's a little early for me, guys. Every year, and Jacob, man, I've got a chance to watch you. At your size, you're, what, about 6'3", six, 6'4", six, playing shortstop, moving around the way you, way you do? Yes, sir. I, I mean, yes, sir. really impressive stuff watching you move around. Your dad talked about uh, the defensive side, but he also said watching some of the great hitters and becoming a hitter. Who are your, some of your favorite hitters that you kind of have watched and tried to emulate a little bit? 
Yeah, so currently being able to go back and watch Major League Baseball, the one guy that I look at the most is Dan G. Swanson, kind of just watching him and how he was a college shortstop as well going back and uh, watching his uh, kind of highlights in, in uh, college was, is super cool to me, kind of watching how he how he attacks the ball, how he kind of has played different uh, disciplines. So for me, that's, that's the one guy that I really like watching play baseball. Hey, talk about the facility there. I know that uh, Tim Salmon is among the notable Grand Canyon alum who has been really actively trying to help the program. Is the clubhouse named for Timmy? Am I right about that? Yeah. Yes, it is, as it should be. I mean, he's he's a major a part of, of kind of where we're at. Um, the, the career he had and where he started here, at, we come to Tim Salmon Clubhouse every day, and that kind of gives that belief system is that, Here's a guy that came out back here when it was a D2 school and came out every day, got his work done, and was a rookie of the year world champion. And, and there's no reason that that can't happen for you. So we walk into those doors every day seeing his name, knowing that, you know, anything's possible coming from Grand Canyon. Jack, I would, I would think the biggest challenge is NC2A regulations for a guy like you who knows so many people and you can bring guys in to talk to the team and be able to go to games and, hey, I can get tickets and go see the Angels or whoever, and you can't. So I wonder how, right. how, how, that, how you navigate that. Uh, you know, I just, I'm learning so much. This is my first year. So I'm, uh, Coach Wallace and the, the rest of the staff has been amazing with slowly teaching me the things I'm not allowed to do. Um, good <laughs> thing is I haven't, I haven't broke too many NCAA violations, which is great. But learning the social media stuff, look at learning about uh, the rules of, of going out and watching kids play and stuff like that, and even what you're talking about getting guys here to, to talk to the boys. So um, I'm still navigating. I'm still working on it every day. A lot to learn. Uh, just had my first fall, which was amazing, and, and really looking forward to learning more this spring. So uh, you're getting ready to kick the season off. You're playing in that tournament. Uh, it's Michigan State, not Michigan in the tournament. We were discussing off air a little bit. But you're going to open up the, the tournament playing some different teams. As you get ready, from your perspective, Jack, understanding – the long haul of a season and how you grow and, and change through a season. How do you look at opening a year and being able to keep guys in perspective of it's a long season ahead? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is, is making short-term goals, um, keeping an eye on the present. Uh, obviously we have the big goals where you're looking to try to make it to Omaha, go to world series, um, you know, get into a, a regional super regional, all those steps. But I think that first one was such good programs that we're going to play in those first four games. Um, and then the, taking each day, every day, not, not really mattering who you're playing. Just understand that we have our brand of baseball and we need to go out and execute our plan for that day. So that's really the focus of the entire season is every day is a new day, no matter what happened the day before, whether it's a win or a loss. Uh, we still have a job to do. We still got to go play GCU baseball and, and get it done. So uh, day by day, nine innings by nine innings, man. Just keep, keep, keep grinding and keep working. Jack and Jacob, we appreciate the visit this morning. Uh, I, I know you guys can't wait to get the season kicked off, and, and we're looking forward to watching the opener of this tournament. The, uh, the 17th of February is the big day. We appreciate the time today, guys. Awesome. Thanks for having us, fellas. All right, go yeah, get them, you. guys. Jacob, go get them, man. Have a great year. Relax. Your talent's there. Just be yourself. Thank you. I really appreciate that. February right, 17th right here on MLB Network. You can tune in the uh, Desert Invitational. Time for us to say something.